All right, so let's talk for a minute about nothing. Specifically, how to use nothing on the screen. See, the problem is, in some ways, even though it can be very difficult to get started with filmmaking, filmmaking can be too easy. In other words, it can a filmmaker can get lazy because you don't have to create, for example, a background. You can just point the camera, stick an actor in front of whatever. You want it to take place in a school, point it at a school. You want it to take place in a city, find an alley if you don't live in a city. Anything. And everything's filled in for you. The challenge can be then thinking about screen composition and specifically how to use the absence of something. So let's look at a couple of examples to show what I mean. Now here's a still from uh, The Shining, Stanley Kubrick's film. And note the borders, the edges. There is an encroaching darkness, probably not even really noticeable on first listen, but really, um, once you see it, it's unmistakable. This is not natural lighting at all. This is taking a scene and twisting it from all uh, what should be on paper, a very touching image, a father holding his son. But the, the expressions, of course, the awesome Kubrick stare going on, all make it uh, sort of a bad dream of a scene, but then you add in the encroaching darkness in the background and you've really got something happening there. Take it once uh, in another direction. If we look at this from Catherine Bigelow's Strange Days, here we have dark, the, the absence of something not really being used in an artistic way necessarily, but just visually compelling. It also tells you something about the filmmaker. In this image, it's very clear what this filmmaker cares about in the image. This is not about time and place. This is not about characterization. This is about awesome looking people in awesome outfits, firing guns, etc. And so here, in this sense, nothing isn't really being used. In other words, if I replaced the background here with a cityscape, uh, a city at night, something like that, not much changes, right? It's still the same basic image. Compare it to this. This is one of the final scenes from Eric von Stroheim's uh, Greed. And here, one, we've got the great juxtaposition of the dark gun in the center of the screen against this just wasteland of nothingness, which sort of, and so the, the, the nothingness there. Now, of course, obviously there is technically something. There is clay, there is sky, and so on. But it is so bleached, so sparse, so lifeless, it is, in effect, nothing. And it helps illustrate a couple of things. One, the severity of their situation. Two, on a symbolic level, the, the emptiness their lives have become. And three, the, the depth of their obsession with each other. They clearly have bigger concerns than each other at the moment. And yet, <clears throat> all they're focusing on is the, the rage between them. So that's a really great use uh, of nothingness. I think it's interesting that a lot of times filmmakers who use nothing very, very well are filmmakers who got their start painting. Because painters have to fill in everything. They have to choose what goes in every inch of the image they want to create. So just, I mean, one of the undisputed sort of, one of the undisputed masters of screen composition, Akira Kurosawa. Look at this image from Throne of Blood. There's no question who the most important person is in this image. And if they were more crowded, if we saw even the ground, if there was mud, anything between him and those other soldiers, it really, it really changed the image. But the fact that there's just this void, this, this ghost of, of, of anything between him and this just mob of soldiers closing in on him, really, like, there's no question that he is in a lot of trouble. But that creates a sense of helplessness. There's not much sense here that he's going to suddenly stand up and take them all on. Something, things are closing in. And again, think about if we saw the ground here, if we saw a pavement. Similarly, going back to this one, if we change the background, if suddenly there are mountains, clearly, or um, a path or anything, it is a wildly different image with a different feel, a different subtext, etc. So Kurosawa did start out as a painter, as did David Lynch. And David Lynch usually likes to fill his screens with a lot of things, but when he employs nothingness, he does it very effectively. So we look here at Blue Velvet, very similar darkness in the background from Bigelow's Strange Days, and yet it's really enhancing what's happening. Their faces just glow against this darkness. And we see so much in Dennis Hopper's face, 
Rossellini's face, the contrast of the two of them against this just nothing behind them. And you can see that through a lot of his films. Of course, the, the iconic image from Eraserhead. Uh, but even if you look at something like Mulholland Drive, where there is, again, there are things in the background. And yet by washing it out the way he does, by creating a sense of emptiness, it illustrates the isolation of the character. So in this sense, it's a much more symbolic um, suggestion of emptiness. So as you're starting to think about how screens are composed, thinking about composing your own screens, think about what's going to go in where, and more importantly, why. If you're going to put nothing there, why? If you're going to put something there, how is that going to improve upon the lack of something? And as you're watching films where they make this choice, is it because they just wanted it to look cool, which is fine, or were they trying to do something with that? And again, use that basic tool of what, was some, what if something different was in the background? So that's just a quick crash course on nothing.